How the heck are you doing? Where do you get your training from? Who, who teaches you as you go through your career paths and your career choice, et cetera, et cetera? You know, I went through a pretty massive change in my career about 10 years, eight years ago, eight years ago, nine, seven years ago, when I stopped doing a traditional TV show and started to move into this online space. And I had to find people who I could trust, who I could understand, who would teach me this new, this new business, the, the online business, everything from doing online courses to email and newsletter and, and, and the information product sales and content marketing and webinars and, and video and YouTube, I had to learn it all. I had so much to learn. I found podcasts, I found websites, I found a whole bunch of resources. And as I did, I, I suddenly, I, I fell into a different, a new habit, constant training, constantly learning, constantly discovering new ideas. I think that is a natural thing that happens to a lot of us now. <sighs> our generation, we spend our formative years learning the trade skills that we needed to get us through life. By the time we're what, 35, 40, we learned most of the skills that we needed to, to excel in our business. And then it was more polishing than learning new things. And we were in execution mode. We weren't necessarily in learning and training mode. When I stopped doing a traditional line of work, when I start, stopped doing traditional media, I jumped on a, uh, the training bandwagon and the learning bandwagon. I, st I stepped back into to, to my job being to learn as well as to execute. I became a student again. And it brought me back to a term which I, <laughs> I never took too seriously before but I do now. Lifelong learning. Back when I did my very first TV shows, I did them at an educational broadcaster. And they always used to talk about lifelong learners. And I had this avatar of a lifelong learner, this image of what a lifelong learner was. Because, you know, for educational TV, there was a certain type of person who was more mature who was interested in constantly learning in their life. And it wasn't what I saw myself growing into. No, it wasn't. It was... I'm going to get, I'm going to get, this is, I'm going to get in trouble. It was a older woman who never dyed her hair. You know, it was my favorite old aunt who always was curious about everything and always learning and always reading books and always learning new skills and always into arts and always into crafts and always into adventure travel and all of these sorts of things. She just never acted her age. My favorite aunt. But she was always curious and she was always learning. That's probably the reason she was my favorite aunt. But she was this person who always had a voracious appetite to continue to learn. I never saw that that was what I was going to evolve into. Yet here I find myself now, it's about to turn 60, and I have an insatiable appetite to learn again. And I don't know, I don't think it was in my DNA to do this. I don't think that if the world hadn't changed as dramatically as it has in the last 10 years, and my life hadn't changed as much, I'm not sure I would have this appetite to learn again. But a big part of the renaissance that I felt in moving from a traditional business model to an online business model has been the energy and the passion and the excitement of learning something new, of discovering something new, and not knowing if it was going to succeed, and not knowing at all if it was going to succeed. So, but because we are in a marketplace where the experts are only a couple of months ahead of the students, who do you turn to to learn now? Who is your trusted advisor? Who are the people who you rely on to give you the skills to move into the next phase of your business, of your life, whatever path you're on. So I thought I would share with you the people who I trust and especially the people who I trusted as I moved into this new space, uh, who gave me the baseline knowledge that gave me the ability to reinvent myself in the online world from the traditional world. So I'm going to share my podcasts with you, the podcasts that I listened to because so much of what I learned, I learned while walking about with yonder dog in the in, in walks listening to podcasts with earbuds stuck in my ears I listen to so many different podcasts and I tend to binge listen and have seasons that I listen to different content so I'm not going to share all of them with you I'm only going to share the three that I check every week no matter what 
These are the ones that I started with way back now, six years ago when I first transitioned, seven years ago when I first transitioned. And I started listening to all three of these podcasts back then, and I still listen to them today. All right? Which one should we start with, Farley? Which one? Let's start with Amy. We'll start with Amy Porterfield. Um, Amy Porterfield's podcast, her, her uh, what was what was her podcast called? Uh, I should know the name of her podcast. It is called Online Marketing Made Easy. Um, I know that. Do you really listen to it, Steve? Yes, I, I check it every week. I don't listen every week, but I check every week, and I used to listen every week as I was learning. Why Amy Porterfield? Am I mentioning her first? Actually, I kind of go back with Amy, even though she probably doesn't remember this. I met her first at the conference that was marked the beginning of my journey into online. I was speaking, I was emceeing an award show at a social media conference in Victoria, BC, and Mari Smith was a keynote speaker, and Amy was speaking at that conference. She was just starting out teaching Facebook ads at the time, I believe. And I wasn't there for social media. I was there to be uh, an MC for, uh, for an awards thing. And I happened to sit at a table with them at dinner, and I started to get intrigued. And Mari told me about the online marketing world. Amy hardly said a word. She's a little bit shy in public, uh, or she was then. But, or maybe it was just I was a little overbearing, perhaps. Uh, but she, uh, but... Uh, Mari saw what I was doing on television, how I was teaching technology, said, you should be doing it online. And she got me on the path to considering doing an online business. But Amy was there and I met her. And I, she just at about that time, she started to make her podcast, to deliver a podcast. And I started to listen to it and she made sense. But she, the reason that she was so compelling in the early days is she had to overcome a lot of personal insecurities in the online space in order to grow a community. But her business practices are, were so rock solid. The business principles that she put in place were always so well considered that I always I learned so much from her back in the early days. The reason I've stayed with her for so long is she's got a tremendous ethos and she's constantly refining the process and she stays focused in the online marketing area. So she has been, go, I, I don't know if any single person has helped me more than her. I don't know if she knows that. I'll have to tell her that someday. Amy Porterfield, check her out. The second person that I've listened to since day one is Michael Stelzner's social media marketing podcast uh, because Michael is kind of like the accountant for all of us. He checks the numbers and everything that he talks about is based on the statistics that are really happening. Uh, now, it tends to be a little bit trendy because social media marketing world is concerned with what's happening right now in the world of social media marketing, uh, and, but he's always on top of the newest trends and what's happening and th they're, through their their site, there's so much valuable tactics delivered all the time in social media examiner and the social media examiner group delivers that Mike Stelzner and his podcast are one that I have listened to since the beginning. The third that I listen to is Pat Flynn's podcast, which is Smart Passive Income. And again, I caught Pat at the very beginning and his his passion for creating passive income, for creating products that earn you revenue when you're not actively actually working them and massaging them, caught my imagination. And again, very successful. Uh, and he, he's been a big help. Now, here's the interesting thing. When you look at all three of these, uh, they are all younger than I am uh, by some, uh, there's a 10, probably a 20, and a, probably a 30, was it 30? No, he can't be 30 years younger than me. 10, maybe 25 year gap. All younger than me. I wonder when you find people who you follow in the online space or as you're, as you're developing your lifelong learning skills, are you ageist? Do you look for somebody of the same vintage as yourself to learn from? I'd love to know whether or not that makes a big difference to you or not. Uh, there's not many people my age that I could follow that, uh, that, that were doing what I was doing. So, but if there was, I don't know whether I would have been more drawn to them or not. Um, I think in the world of technology, there's a bit of ageism and we think that younger people understand technology better than older people. Uh, but I love to hear what podcasts, what resources you rely on that you listen to, to develop your skills. I, I, I need to, I want to see that in the comments below. Um, and I'll share some others in the, in the, in the comments as, as well. And I'll share more in the description as I, re, as I remember a few more, but I wanted to sh share those three to get started. And I wanted to make this a conversation starter, a fire starter of who are the best online resources for lifelong learning for us. That's what I wanted to talk about today.
Like I'll take him for a W-A-L-K now. Have fun storming the castle.